fixing my head. Basic oh. head bobs. Ready, go. All right. Brad Show with you at 1.30 on a uh, Wednesday afternoon. It's debate day. Um, again, I've said this before and I will say it again. We do not uh, endorse, participate in, or condone uh, any sort of debate drinking game. Uh, especially now in the era of the, you know, the eight-second soundbite and get your slogan in, all that stuff, you know. You're just asking for some sort of chronic liver disease. Um, although, to be fair, I guess with recent events in the news, there is a high likelihood, um, and I'm assuming it would be a high bar, um, to invoke butt chugging. Are you familiar with this concept, Dan? Is that what I think it is? It's pretty much what you think it is. Yeah, I think I saw it on Jackass. If your mind is as devious as mine, this is this has gotten some, like some fraternity people, you know, expelled or whatever. But yeah, but but chugging is a thing. So the the bar should be high if you're going to throw that in your drink game. Like, you know, Barack Obama, you know, my Muslim heritage, or you know, Mitt Romney, you know. Truth be told, I still have all the same view as I did as governor. I don't know what all this is about. Like that, you know, and I, I don't want to know, so don't tell me, don't email me, don't tweet me. I don't want photos or any diagram. I don't necessarily need to know how butt chugging works. Just knowing that it exists is pain enough, I think, for several lifetimes. So there's all sorts of, again, fun stuff going on. Teddy Roosevelt finally won the president's race in D.C. I mean, come on, that's big news. Uh, Todd Akin believes that, um, again, this is how evil and dastardly the abortion industry is, uh, that they are giving abortions to women that aren't pregnant. Who knew? But again, this is a, a meme in the uh, anti-choice world. All of that kind of falls by the wayside. Really, two things uh, today. Uh, the debates, which we'll get to, <clears throat> and why Romney will probably win. Bet you didn't expect me to say that, but it's true. Um, probably not for the reasons you're thinking, but we'll explain. Uh, first, though, and I, I'm completely kicking myself. Um, yesterday, I, I mentioned it at the end of the show, but I didn't have time to get into it. George Will's uh, called you know, Romney, running out the clock, which is the usual kind of tripe um, that you're getting from not very fired up Republicans these days. And if you have to make a sports analogy to make a point, you probably don't have a point to make. That's just me. Um, but it ends with. Invoking race. Danger, danger, Will Robinson. Tread lightly. Uh, in this case, George Will, who writes far better about baseball than he does politics, except for his LaRusso fixation. I don't really know what's up with that. Uh, brings up not Jackie Robinson, broke the color barrier with the Brooklyn Dodgers, but Frank Robinson, uh, the first African American manager. Uh, in baseball history. And what, what he said was a uh, important milestone was June 19th, 1977, when he was fired. The first fired. Then we've truly reached equality. The managers get fired all the time. The fact that the Indians felt free to fire Robinson, who went on to have a distinguished career managing four other teams, showed that another racial barrier had fallen. Henceforth, African Americans, too, could enjoy the God-given right to be scapegoats for impatient team owners or incompetent team executives. Perhaps a pleasant paradox defines this political season. That Obama is African American may be important, but in a way quite unlike that darkly suggested, for example, by MSNBC's excitable boys and girls who, at their at most one-track minds, an exquisitely sensitive olfactory receptor sniff racism in any criticism of their pinup. Instead, the nation, which is generally reluctant to declare a president a failure, therefore admitting that it made a mistake in choosing him, seems especially reluctant to give up on the first African-American president. If so, the 2012 election speaks well of the nation's heart, if not its head. 
Yes, because Lord knows if there's one group that has truly been advantaged in this country, it's blacks. Um, now, again, forget the, the straw man of every criticism against the president is bounded in racism. No, some are simply bounded in stupidity and some are legitimate uh, policy differences. Um, comes in all spectrums. But I really wish I would, I would have spent... Uh, more time on that one yesterday. Because uh, we've talked about dog whistles uh, in this election. You know, and this goes back to again, the, before Obama was even elected and the othering of him. Uh, this is why so many on the right were afraid to offend the birthers. So very few politicians would come out and say, you know, I don't believe he was born in America. I think he is a Kenyan Muslim usurper. But they'll tiptoe around the issue as not to offend the delicate sensibilities of the racist brigade. The othering. Uh, the word foreign seems to work. You know, even to this day, his ideas are un-American. And that's the, you know, I'm blowing this whistle as hard as I can. It's not making any noise. It's the, it's the dog whistle. Oh. From the advent of the welfare queen, a figment of the mind of Ronald Reagan where some woman in the south side of Chicago, not that we're implying anything, oh. is driving Cadillacs and making $200,000 a year cheating the welfare system. You know, an extension of the southern strategy. And I'll let you... Like, I can't even use the language that Lee Atwater, if Karl Rove was Bush's brain, Lee Atwater was Reagan's, uh, used to describe uh, the Southern strategy. Uh, basically boils down to, those people are taking your hard-earned white dollars. And it go, you know, goes back to the angry 1940s and Jim Crow, and evolves through integrations, school busing. Now it seems to have landed on the, the welfare uh, imagery. Food stamps, President. The Obama phone. I don't know, can the Obama phone run iOS 6? So that leads us to yesterday afternoon. I do the show, I go home, I try to fix my broken space bar. If anyone has an uh, extra space bar for a SciTech Eclipse uh, keyboard, I'd, I'd be in your debt. Um, but then I, I flip over and I, I, I take a look at, at Drudge. And what do I see? Uh-oh, you know, sirens, big story, developing. Uh-oh. Now, for those of you who aren't familiar with Drudge, Matt Drudge was a cashier at the CBS store in Los Angeles, started a website peddling Hollywood gossip uh, that he would overhear in the store. This was back in the mid-90s. Uh, got his big break uh, when rumors of the Lewinsky story. You may have heard something about that in the news. And since then, um, Matt the Eggman Drudge, and, <clears throat> I don't know, this is a family-friendly affair. I don't know if I can explain. Uh, Matt Drudge is a gay man, and there's nothing wrong with that. But he decided, uh, probably about five, six years ago, any longer, uh, to pick a fight with a gossip columnist. This is generally a bad idea. Ask Will McAvoy. <clears throat> I believe it was Jeanette Wells um, wrote a piece on Matt Drudge having an interesting affection to eggs, like, on his body. And like clothes, sex, and the shower. Just, he's a weird dude um, who runs maybe the preeminent kind of right wing noise site out there. <coughs> as far as the, the right wing noise machine works, it kind of starts as rabble on the blogs or a think tank or some pundit with the hopes of attracting a drudge link. 
uh, which can bring you know massive web traffic. Uh, the goal then of the the Drudge Link is to give a story legs, momentum, importance to perhaps break into you know, the real world. Uh, most of the time this fails, but again, even if you're shooting you know one out of fifty, hey, it's better off than you were before. Um, you know, the talk during the Republican uh, presidential debates was that the Romney camp was leaking, you know, opposition research to the Drudge Report, and that seems to have been uh, backed up. But it's kind of the go-to dumping ground. Andrew Breitbart was a Drudge protege, to give you an idea of what we're working with here. Uh, Judd Legum over at uh, Think Progress came up with some of the better uh, drudge headlines from this year. Uh, Obama proposed to repeat auto bailout for every industry in America. That would have been fun. Now, it wasn't going to happen, but... Uh, Obama admits fabricating his girlfriend in memoir. Remember this in his uh, book? And you're right, he did admit, in fact, in the book, that some characters were composites. Um... Uh, Evidence that Obama was born in Kenya, uh, the Obama phone, uh, Condoleezza Rice was at the top of uh, Romney's VP list, uh, Sheriff Joe out in Arizona has uncovered evidence that it's a fake birth certificate, that is. Uh, Joe Biden proposes a global tax. Obama had time to meet with a pirate, but not Benjamin Netanyahu and this was for international talk like a pirate day. Um, they, the Obama team tweeted a photo of the, the president uh, with a man dressed in a pirate costume. And the claim was the time, oh, you know, he'll do this, but he won't meet with the, the prime minister of Israel. It turns out it was a photo from 2009 for the White House Correspondents' Dinner. And last night, Obama's other race speech. You know, headlines, big, bold title. Everyone's going, okay, what is, what is this video going to be? What is the, you know, oh, God, have they found the Whitey tape? Remember in 2008, the, oh, you know, there's a tape of Michelle Obama somewhere saying that she hates Whitey and it's going to be released. It's going to be found. It's going to be, you know, posted online. That will sink the Obama campaign. So a couple things at work here. One, if they're teasing it before they're releasing it, you know it's nothing. The goal is... To get people talking. Um, then the fine folks over at BuzzFeed um, actually posted uh, the video. This bombshell, never before reported, recently unearthed, um, you know, race video of Barack Obama turns out to be a televised speech. From Obama to Hampton University in 2007. Uh, here, this is just a, a clip of the uh, the Obama address uh, to Hampton University in 2007. But, uh, this was the big bombshell. From the very beginning, back in 2002, <coughs> when it wasn't popular to be against the war, everybody's against the war now. Want to make that point? I opposed it because I believe strongly that it could lead to disaster that we find ourselves in today. Our brave young servicemen and women mired in the middle of a civil war. And that's why I introduced a plan at the beginning of this year that said, we've got to have all our combat troops out by March 31st of next year, force the Iraqi government to meet its obligations. We need 16 Republican votes in the Senate to vote this president to change course in Iraq. That's the only chance we have to end this war in Iraq. That is real. That's not symbolism. Sixteen votes in the Senate, comparable number in the House, and we can bring an end to this war. Our God is big enough to help us do that, but we've got to stand up and say, it is time for us to end this war in Iraq. All right, so, what? No, oh, God, you're scaring me there. Don't do that. Sorry, it was loaded up just oh. in case. That was the... Uh... That was a clip of the uh, the address, but Drudge was still pumping it out even after BuzzFeed kind of like, this is the video he's talking about? 
that it was set to debut on Tucker Carlson's Daily Caller website at 9 o'clock at the same time he was going to go on Hannity on Fox and they're going to break this down. And uh, I'm still trying to, you know, it's been 12 hours and I'm still trying to quite digest what exactly the explosive bombshell. The best I can come up with is that uh, Obama is black. Uh, were you aware of this fact, this, this bombshell revelation? He's only half black. Potato. Well, it's worth mentioning. I'm, I'm, but I'm still trying to, to get to, you know, what was so uh, damning about this video. And it's a 30-minute video. You can find it on a 39-minute video. Uh, you watch it online. The president talks about uh, Katrina, which, again, kudos to Tucker Carlson for let's bring that up again in the Republic, the Republican response to Katrina. That that's a surefire winning issue for your side, son. For those who don't know Tucker Carlson, by the way, he was the guy that John Stewart basically clowned out of a job on Crossfire. It was Tucker Carlson, the bow tie wearing Republican side, and it was Paul Begala on the, the left, and, and John Stewart basically played them both for the fool. Um, and is widely credited with the cancellation of the long running CNN crossfire program. So John Stewart clowns him out of a job, and he goes on to live on wingnut welfare, you know, receives the massive donations, set up his right wing journalism site. And this was, this was his big find. Um, which, again, led to some interesting discussions. For example, this is uh, Tucker Carlson going on The Hannity Show to discuss this video. And a fair warning, uh, this might not be safe for work, uh, children, or your brain cells. But this is Tucker this is Carlson speech. on Hannity. One thing just stands out at you. that, And, and this is a common phenomenon. I, Al Gore, Republicans have the wrong agenda for African Americans. They don't even want to count you in right. the census, he said before a predominantly African American audience. Right. Hillary Clinton did the same thing. Do you notice a change in the way he delivers the speech before a predominantly African American audience? Well, the accent, let, let, let me just be totally clear, and anyone who just watched it and who's seen Obama speak uh, in public over the last 10 years will note this accent is absurd. This is not the way Obama talks. At least it's not the way he's talked in the dozens, the scores of speeches I've watched him give or public appearances I've seen him make. This is a put on. This is phony. That's the issue. The issue is he is telling a predominantly black audience something very clear. The federal government doesn't like you because you are black. That's a that's a they don't care as much about say. That's a divisive thing. That's, that's what he's saying. They he don't like you because they are black. That is the theme of the speech from front to back, from beginning to end. They don't like you because of your skin color. And that is a shockingly, uh, that's, a, that's a nasty thing to say. It's a divisive thing to say. It's a demagogic thing to say. And in the case of Katrina, it's an untrue thing to say. I am proud I opposed this war <laughs> from the very beginning, back in 2002. Man, that's back to the, uh... first of all, let's, let's take a second, close our eyes, and try to imagine a world where Sean Hannity and Tucker Carlson, who was not wearing the bow tie yesterday, to show you how serious he was, are telling black people how to speak. Ixnay on the dog's whistle, A. <clears throat> well, I don't know that they were actually telling him how to speak, though. They were making a comment that he didn't speak that way normally. I mean, Barack, it, Barack Obama is kind of known but for But their being point a, was he doesn't speak that way publicly. And their evidence for this was a televised speech at Hampton University, which I'm pretty sure was a public affair. Fair, because it was done, you know, in sure. front of an audience and TV cameras. I don't think anybody should argue this guy's a good speaker. He's a great speaker. Well, the, the, the point being is that he's black. He see, he's 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 either a fake black or b faking white. That I mean, that's the root of the argument. That's or, what they're or trying. He's, or he's trying to re, uh, relate to a class lower than him that uses ebonics, and I don't know that. That's, I didn't hear any ebonics in there. No, I didn't either. He wasn't dropping the. But you that's know. what I think they're. Alluding I didn't hear to. a faux shizzle. I think that's what they're alluding to, and I don't think that's any more a race thing. I think that you can find 
people that use Ebonics. Well, they specifically invoke race when they talk about the Katrina. Sure. Uh, but he's telling black people that the government doesn't care about you. Black people. Because well, the but, president's a black person. Yeah, but see, I mean, Kanye West addressed them and said the same thing. I mean, so so I think they're they're piggybacking off of statements that were made towards Katrina there, that that were directed towards the. I African think everyone. American. I think at this point, other than I mean, the true bitter clingers agree that uh, the governmental response to Katrina was and has been a, an absolute disaster. I, I think is a disaster. Do I think it was a racist disaster? Is the, another question though. And one that gets raised more. If it, more often. if it hadn't been a minority city, a poor minority city, would things have been different? I don't believe so. Well, we certainly didn't let New York sit in a state. Yeah, uh, but New York's a cultural center for, for America, and it's an icon. So is I, New Orleans. I, I would argue. Have you ever been that, to a Popeyes? I would argue that New, or New Orleans doesn't have the same clout that New York does. Now, I agree that it would be both of them would be more likely than Des Moines. Imagine if something like that happened here. But it'd be well, fixed up in a jiffy. Now that's because we would fix it up, not because the government would come in and save us with oh. FEMA. No, FEMA is pretty much on the scene. For example, Parkersburg. The problem with Katrina basically boiled down to uh, Michael Brown, Brownie. Sure. Who did a heck of a job, had no experience in any sort of management, especially disaster management or emergency management. He was a lawyer for the Arabian Horse Association. And a bush bundler. Yeah, I think I think that uh, he. I know, think that's the the bigger issue. I, with... I think we had incompetent people, and I think it was a, a, a enormous natural disaster that we didn't properly prepare for. No, I far mean, that, far from it. And yeah, we, we and, still. I mean, we we learned this year that. But I don't think there's still black areas. Thing. I just don't think it was a. Uh, well, that wasn't a priority, and I, and I would argue the president didn't make it a black argument hannity and tucker carlson did. well I, I might agree with you there that and, and that's the root of the the issue now what strikes me this is a, the, the the true importance of this the fact that you know the hannity's and tucker carlson's are running around october surprise is, is the least surprising thing ever it's the lack of quality like, this is what you've got as an October surprise? Because it turns out that this bombshell revelation that the media is, you know, hiding from you video was actually all over the media back in 2007. In fact, it played on Fox News. I can even, Tuesday, June 5th, 2007, by the way, when, when faced with accusations of this, uh, quote from Tucker Carlson, people are saying it's already been reported, but no, it hasn't been reported. I know because I reported on it. Let that statement sink in for a minute. See, I think if you're going to talk about anybody with the first name Tucker, the last name should be Max. No. A dog named Tucker. Good little boy. But I got a he dog. He can do a barrel roll. I got a dog named Tucker, too. See? There we go. But but I think when we ever talk about about a person, I would rather talk about Tucker Max than this guy. But it was a story that, again, was covered in 2007. I, the, the fact that the, the even right wing... Even Dace picked up on that. Really? Yeah. Then then it has to be plainly obvious. Yeah, it's, it's, it's definitely out there. Um. This was the quiet riot speech. Um, where is I've got a. You know, there's a. Uh, Roland Martin, I believe, uh, did a piece on CNN back in 2007. Fox covered it uh, in 2007. It didn't go anywhere then, and it didn't go anywhere last night because within an hour or so, it was already off the drudge headline. It was a complete dud. I guess point being, uh, well, two things. One, it, is it pretty much at this point only a matter of time until Sean Hannity is looking for Larry Sinclair live on the air? Do you know who Larry Sinclair is? This is another part of the uh, the right-wing fever dream that uh, uh, Barack Obama has had gay sex with a man named Larry Sinclair. 
Yes, this is absolutely the bottom of the barrel. This is not mainstream Republican thought by any shape or form. This is the, the true uh, nutsos. Uh, but what else do they have left? You know, Rasmussen shows Obama in the lead. Uh, Gallup shows that Obama with a positive approval rating. And, you know, a poll lead. Uh, Ohio is looking out of play. Iowa's looking out of play. Romney's behind in Florida. Pennsylvania's off the map. West, or Wisconsin's off the map. And North Carolina is tied. If you're a Republican and you're fighting for North Carolina on October 3rd, you got problems, son. You've got 100 problems. I don't feel bad for you. What else are they... I mean... Short of going just full crazy, what do you got? If this is your best, like, game change moment shot before the debates, you got a problem. Big one. And so this story is, again, the, the tape isn't the, the story. Even the, you know, the fact that it was hyped and fizzled and, you know, it was a dud. Um, are these their best shots? You know, is this what the Republican Party is going to to go with? I mean, I know they're not huge Romney fans, and I know the the tide doesn't look good, but this is seemingly the best thing they've got. You can follow me on Twitter, twitter.com slash Radio Bradshaw. Uh, Jeremy uh, was doing me, asking me about Fast and Furious, Benghazi, and uh, Lockheed Martin being exempted from the Warren Act. <clears throat> he said, I question how you would view these instances if Obama was the GOP. Obama was the GOP. One, I would be rightly shocked that Republican base would... I like the black guy, but that's neither here nor there. Um, and this is kind of one of my beefs with the, you know, the Daces and the Michelsons and uh, the Hannity's of the world. They bring up all the, you know, it's kind of the outrage of the day. The <clears throat> here's the thing you should be really upset about uh, for this, the Lord's Day of October 3rd. And, you know, every day it's something new. It's a new, <clears throat> you know, outrage light. And then the question I asked Jeremy, and I, I'd ask of you too, if you could hey, think of a good answer, because I can't. You know, you bring up Fast and Furious, which turns out went nowhere. It was a Republican fishing expedition. Like I, I completely understand being against the concept of gun walking, but be consistent. Remember where gun walking started, but it was never about guns, or even dead Border Patrol agents. It was about smearing Eric Holder, and it failed. We dropped, and we'll move on to something new. Uh, Lockheed Martin being exempted from the WARN Act. Now, my guess would be probably has more to do with sequestration, not actually going through, but time uh, will tell. Uh, the point that the righties miss, the Michelsons miss, the true believers miss, is that uh, these things that excite and, and titillate and outrage you, that's supposed to get me to abandon my core ideals and, and jump to Team Romney? As if I think I'm going to get a, a better result on any of these you know, individual slights and outrages uh, from the GOP. Let alone, you know, I'm just going to ignore all of my, you know, previously deeply held beliefs. And that is why these sorts of attacks fail. Uh, Oliver Willis is a research uh, assistant, works over at Media Matters. Uh, made a good point in talking about the the drudge, you know, Breitbart, uh, Tucker Carlson, uh, Hannity. 
um, when they see the right wing, you know, put out videos like they did last night, uh, this excites them. They're proud uh, of their movement doing these things. You know, as embarrassing as it may seem to the rest of us, uh, it makes them giddy. And this may be the ultimate failure of the modern day GOP is the things that excite their base, the things that fire up their base, um, repulse everyone else. And I'm not talking just, you know, Democrats, liberals, you know, middle America, independent voters. They're turnoffs. So how do you, again, appease that base? while not turning off everyone else. And this is, well, the impossible question that has vexed the Romney campaign, I think is a good reason why even, you know, right-wing columnists are calling, you know, the, the campaign without a plan. Oh, kind of talked about this yesterday. Have we reached peak wingnut where people just simply aren't believing things that are coming from the right? Undecided voters, when they hear, you know, an Obama attack thing, that's probably taken out of context. That's their first response. Again, the right has cried wolf so many times, it's falling on deaf ears. I've got another piece to, to, of evidence to back that up. We will build that uh, next. Email me, radiobradshaw at gmail.com. Follow me on Twitter, twitter.com slash radiobradshaw. And go to thebradshawshow.com. Uh, for all of your entertainment needs, thebradshawshow.com uh, has links to the audio, the archives, the, the live stream. It's all there at thebradshawshow.com, powered by Webcast One. Be back right after this. Thanks for watching on a Wednesday. I'm just saying. 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 Ching ching. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Spearman. I'm a broker owner of Remax Real Estate Concepts in Des Moines, Iowa. Give us a call if you're looking at buying or selling a home, or if you're having trouble on your mortgage payments or looking to purchase foreclosures, we have the agents to help you. Experienced, outstanding agents. Our office number is 515-276-2872. Or if you'd like to look at homes, go to our website, homeconnectusa.com. Hi, I'm J. Michael McCoy, and about 20 years ago, I went to a used car salesman by the name of John Hewitt. He had a little shop over there on North 2nd Avenue called John's Auto Sales, and I bought a car. I found that experience to be one that I had never had before from a used car salesman. He was honest, he was dependable, he had integrity, and he did what he said he was going to do. Well, over the years, between my kids and grandkids, I've purchased seven vehicles from John's Auto Sales. And last month, I asked him to be a sponsor. And he said not only would he like to be a sponsor, but he would offer a $100 tithe for every customer that came and bought a car from him directly to the church of your choice. I can tell you about their huge selection. I can tell you about their years of experience. I can tell you about their honest integrity. But all I really need to tell you is that I bought seven cars, and you can trust them. John's Auto Sales, 5435 2nd Avenue, Des Moines. You need a good ride when you hit the trail. Trust the man with the cars, and he goes by the name of Big John. Big John. Big John.
From the Remax Real Estate Concept Studios, this is Webcast One Live. Let's start. Rock concert oh, man. number one. All right. Your basic head. All right, right. Bradshaw with you here. Uh, coming up, we'll talk about why Mitt Romney will probably win the first presidential debate. But uh, first, uh, this is um, interesting. A, in, this comes, you know, the day after uh, we talk about have Republicans reached peak wing nut? Like, have they gotten to the point where your average, ordinary, everyday person again sees them? Get the vapors, clutch the pearls, faint on the couch. And it, just, it doesn't register. Uh, and we may have gotten to this point. This is from an NBC Wall Street Journal poll. Yesterday I told you about Haley Barber's uh, group running focus groups that show there's an inherent distrust um, in ads attacking the president. We have more evidence for this being the case. Uh, and again, this is from an NBC Wall Street Journal poll. And if you want to try to argue that the Wall Street Journal is some liberal rag, uh, I'd love to laugh at you. Email me, radiobradshaw at gmail.com. The Barack Obama recently said, if you've been successful, this is one of their poll questions, you did not get there on your own. There was a great teacher somewhere in your life. Someone helped you create the American system that allowed you to thrive. He said, if you have a business, you didn't build that. Someone else made that happen. When we succeed, we succeed because of our, our individual initiative. But we also do things together. Does this make you feel more positive or more negative about Barack Obama? Does it make not much difference in your opinion? Or do you not know enough uh, about this to have an opinion at this time? Asking them about the you didn't build that line. Uh, that Republicans, by the way, are still running on, have, passing out T-shirts... They devoted one evening of their convention, a convention that was already shortened by one day because of weather. But they devoted an entire tonight to, we built that. Uh, when asked about this, uh, now 20, 26% said it didn't make a difference. But more people said it gave the, them a more positive opinion on the president, 36-32. More people said it gives them a better opinion of the president. Now, compare that to Romney's 47%, where 45% said it gave them a more negative opinion of Governor Romney. Their attacks are falling on deaf ears. And it's not like they can push policy. Um, whether Paul Ryan hasn't had time to run the numbers or doesn't have the time to explain on Fox News, a 24-7 kind of GOP propaganda outlet, doesn't have the time to explain his tax plan to a plebe like Chris Wallace. They're running from details, because the details, frankly, aren't pretty. Uh, for example, if you want to cut uh, that top tax rate by 20%, that'll cost you about $350 billion. And if you remove like every tax break you can get your hands on for those folks, you can claw back approximately $280 billion. So you're looking at you know, a $70, $80 billion tax cut for the top uh, bracket in the country. Again, those are little facts. And again, they're never going to give you the specific, you know, deductions we're going to take away to broaden the base. You're never going to hear Mitt Romney or, or Paul Ryan say that they're going to get rid of, uh, say, you know, the mortgage interest deduction, the child, you know, deduction things that are, one, incredibly popular, and two, aimed at the middle class. But if you're aiming for revenue neutral, and this is what again, shocked me when we saw the Washington Post, of all places, call Paul Ryan a flim-flam man. 
Uh, but their op-ed was was right. The the last line was, you know, uh, revenue neutral, you know, is irrelevant. Uh, what matters is cutting that top tax rate, and they will do that come hell or high water. You know, for all the, the Republican complaints, oh, stop blaming this on George Bush. Stop invoking George Bush. Stop running on his policies. Tax cuts and deregulation, what a novel idea. Why hadn't Republicans ever thought of that in the last 30 years? Oh, wait, it's all they've thought about in the last 30 years. And this time, they don't have a, a good wedge issue uh, to stem the bleeding. In 2004, it was same-sex marriage, and now poll after poll shows majority support. The register poll over the weekend showed a majority here in Iowa, right? The, the home of the Vanderplatz money-making, sure, I'm a Christian now, organization. Shows majority support for retaining uh, Supreme Court Justice Wiggins. In spite of the Republican bus tour. And the 2016 hopefuls already stopping by the state. Please, for the love of God, stop spreading Santorum. Exercise Bobby Jindal. Uh, but we already have, you know, 2016 wannabes stopping by the state. And it's only going to get worse. Uh, say December's probably going to be a rough time for dealing with some of the income boobs that are going to come to our states. Well, the point being, they don't have any new policy to run on. And the the issues, you know, you didn't build that over and over. The, the closely cropped, you know, 30-second attack ads and the, the harumphing bloggers and, and talk radio hosts, it, it, it turns out the things that excite the Republican base, not every Republican voter, but the base, your Tea Partiers, repel everyone else. They are a turnoff. Your attack ads make people feel more positive about the president. Thanks. Yeah, we couldn't have done it without you. Yeah, which leads us to tonight. Uh, the first Republican or the first presidential debate, Romney, uh, Obama is pretty much on every channel at every uh, every turn. 90 minutes, and it'll be a little more freewheeling uh, than certainly the Republican uh, debates. And in all likelihood, Romney will come out on top. And let, let me explain, because that requires some context. Um, prognosticators, pundits, talking heads, generally greatly overestimate the the real effect uh, that the debates have. Or, I mean, honestly, how many mem moments from the 2008 uh, McCain-Obama uh, debates do you remember? You know, it, this isn't the same equation as just the Republican debates when you had, well, like eight kooks on the stage at any given time. And, yeah, you know what? Any stage that involves, like, Herman Cain, um, Rick Santorum, Michelle Bachman, and Ron Paul, you put those together, you're going to get some wacky and zany moments. I'd ask Rick Perry to think of the top three, but I don't want to be cruel. Uh, these are a little more controlled affair. And I would guess Romney would get a, a slight bump uh, after night polls. Uh, for one good reason. This isn't playing the expectations game. This is just being realistic. Uh, standing on a stage tonight with Barack Obama uh, will do something. I mean, now, now short of, you know, dropping an N-bomb or exposing his magic underwear, or talking about, you know, uh, Soylent Green for the 47%. Obviously, the, the huge uh, gaffe notwithstanding. If, if Romney can just manage to play it safe, uh, he will get a bump for no other reason than standing on stage with President Obama will do something that the Romney campaign has so far been incapable of doing themselves, and that is make Romney appear more presidential. Again, whether it was jumping on the Benghazi attacks, 
before we even knew the whole story. Uh, to, again, the 47% tape, you know, almost at every turn. Uh, the Romney campaign, and certainly they haven't helped themselves with, hey, it's a new week, we're rebooting the campaign. Next week, we're rebooting the campaign. Uh, they in no way, shape, or form have helped themselves do this, and Barack Obama will do it for them by being on stage with the president. Mitt Romney will appear more presidential. Uh, and that will swing, not a lot of votes, but it'll, it'll swing some. It'll swing opinion. Uh, my get again, when you see in the polls, you know, does he appear presidential, which is a bigger question uh, than it gets credit for. Uh, Romney will see that bump. It's just inherent from being on stage uh, with the president. There will be a prestige runoff. Now, that being said, um, for Romney to take advantage of this to be would require um, getting good advice, and I'm not sure exactly how often that happens. It would not surprise me if we were to see Romney take the advice of the you know go get him get under his skin poke him with a short stick call him a liar you name it uh, I think those are all losing strategies uh, if Romney gets aggressive it will only uh, hurt him I'm assuming someone at GOP headquarters is smart enough uh, to know that but never underestimate uh, the power of desperation uh, and never underestimate uh, the power of uh, running out of time. Uh, people do stupid things when they panic. And you know, the, the, the Chicken Little campaign that the Republicans have been running the past couple of months, uh, there is certainly a greater than zero likelihood uh, of Romney again, going, you know, for the Hail Mary. And without replacement refs there, that play doesn't work so well. Again, if Romney tries to pander to the base in this one, uh, as we've shown, uh, can be highly off-putting to, you know, average ordinary people. If he just lays back, plays it safe, dare I say, be conservative. He'll walk out of this uh, with a win. And I, I've tried to explain this to the, the poll truthers. Um, you know, even today, Rush Limbaugh is uh, uh, going on and on about how uh, the media cover-up of the um, Obama video I played earlier in the show is the biggest media conspiracy ever. <laughs> Understand something uh, from Rachel Maddow, mm -hmm, yeah, Ed Schultz to Wolf Blitzer to Candy Crowley uh, to Sean Hannity and the like. Uh, they want a close race. Uh, in fact, looking at Politico, uh, the articles have already started. Uh, and they'll, they'll typically come like this. A Romney rebound, question mark. That's literally the headline today from uh, Politico. Maybe there are second chances in the presidential campaigns. And I told you weeks ago that these stories uh, were coming. Obama could have a 40-point lead in Ohio, 20 points in, in Florida. And that would be really bad for ratings, uh, page clicks, uh, and ad rates, most importantly. Uh, the media has been dying for Romney to toss him a bone. Show us some signs of success, please. We will slavishly report over them. Again, not because they're right-wing, not because they're left-wing, not because they're in the tank for someone other than themselves. A blowout is bad sport. You know, the only op other option they have is to write, you know, the secretariat story. How many horse lengths will he win by? 
Again, which is nowhere near as good as, you know, neck and neck. Do you want to watch a Super Bowl that is a, you know, a 35-point blowout or one that comes down to the final kick? Oh, God, I made a sports analogy. Please forgive me. It's more of a TV analogy. I mean, at this point, as far as horse race goes or sporting analogies go, uh, most of these networks would probably be better off putting Heidi on. Now, that's a D. De- you know what the, do you get the Heidi? Am I just too obscure now for my own good? You're talking about the, the Dutch girl or whatever? The Heidi game. No. Revolutionized sports broadcasting. It was a Jets game, I think. Was it Jets and Raiders back in the 60s? Anyway, NBC had... Uh, talking about two teams nobody cares about. Back from, you know, 40-plus years ago. Uh, the point of me was this. Back in the early days of televised sports, uh, Heidi was supposed to come on at 7 o'clock. It was the Sunday night movie or whatever, and... Uh, the game was going long, and NBC decided to cut away from the game. We're going to show Heidi in its regularly scheduled uh, programming slot. Uh, they then uh, missed uh, like an epic comeback, and I don't remember uh, all of the details, but the point, it solidified now. Sporting events always air until they're absolutely finished. Uh, viewers demand it, and it's just bad programming otherwise. At this point, as far as horse race goes, uh, Wolf Blitz would be better off showing Heidi. Uh, there isn't much one. Um, from the convention bump that never quite went away, uh, and the 47% uh, tape, which seemed to be, you know, the finish him uh, move, there hasn't been a whole lot. Last week was maybe the slowest political news week of an election, you know, of, of you know, late September uh, that uh, I remember. Even midterms are usually more uh, happening than this. But with Romney floundering and Obama, again, not getting enough credit. I mean, yes, he's gotten lucky that Republicans are a disorganized mess of a party, because certainly with the economy being in the state that it was, if, for example, a Huckabee were running, yes, this race would look a lot different. Uh, but not enough kudos, uh, I think, is given to the, the Obama campaign in this. Uh, for this reason. Uh, they picked a message and they stuck with it. Uh, something Romney has a hard time doing because his message really isn't connecting with anyone uh, outside the base, a group that is inherently distrustful of him. Early on, you know, Romney was the presumptive nominee. The decision is, how are we going to go after him? Now, the easiest, uh, most obvious, which is why it's my favorite, uh, is to paint him as a, you know, flip-flopper, know-nothing, who will say anything to anyone if he thinks it will advance his cause. Uh, While I think that is true, He reminds me of the of a salesperson. What do I need to do? What do I need to say to get the deal closed? Like someone else can deal with the, the details of actually covering, you know, the deliverables. I'll 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 let someone else uh, handle that. What do I need to do to get you to sign on the bottom line right now? What do I need you to do uh, to pick up the phone? And buy a pet egg or mighty putty or oxy, you know, you get my point. Uh, I think that has been the, the one thing that he I mean, he's truly taken away from his uh, business career. You know, Romney's main role at Bain Capital wasn't, all right, let's, you know, pick out targets. Let's, how are we going to, this? he was a fundraiser for the most part. Part of the reason he uh, was chosen to help found Bain Capital out of the the original consulting business. And someone else will take care of the the details. What do I need to do to get you to sign on the dotted line today? Can I throw in a set of steak knives? Again, that's the most obvious and easiest. 
uh, approach to branding rum. And like it or not, this is part of campaigns to brand your opponent before you know they can brand themselves. Ask John Kerry what happens when you don't brand yourself and allow the other side to do it for you. Or ask Mitt Romney. The folks at the Obama campaign made a very different uh, decision. Uh, playing the long game, if you will. And they correctly surmised that Mitt Romney would have to tack hard right. Now again, candidates always do this in the, the primary. You tack you know, your direction, and then you want to come back to the center for the general election. Again, the things that get you applause, uh, like, I don't know, executing 300 people at a Republican debate, uh, may not play as well uh, in the general. So, I don't know if this is, you know, a David Plouffe, is this a David Axelrod? Someone along the line uh, made the deduction that Romney wasn't going to be able to tack to the center. The right so distrusted him. Uh, his record as, as governor, Romney care, his statements on choice, on gay rights. Uh, there was so little trust there that Romney would be so afraid of losing the right flank, so afraid that they would you know, just stay home and watch Kirk Cameron movies and eat bananas on election day. Take that, atheists. <laughs> that he would constantly have to coddle them, drag them along. If he showed any signs of, you know, a center lead would have to, you know, quell the fires and throw them some red meat. So instead of portraying, well, multiple choice Mitt, it was a pandering hard right, hard right uh, ideologue. And it was the, the trap, with apologies to uh, Admiral Akbar, that Obama didn't lay, that his team didn't set up. You know, this is... Uh, full on the creation of uh, the noise machine, the talk radio hosts, the Fox Newsers, the Breitbarts, the Becks. As a trap they built, they were the tabletop that Team Obama pushed Romney over. So again, uh, Team Obama doesn't get enough credit for that, but uh, don't kid yourself. The media is dying for any reason to give even the, just the appearance uh, of a Romney comeback, of a tightening race. It's neck and neck. Uh, they don't want to show a blowout. That's bad for page views. No one stops and buys a copy of the register to be reaffirmed yet again that Obama is up 10. That doesn't sell newspapers. It doesn't cause people to you know, turn off Modern Family and watch, you know, the Situation Room. And that's why I think you get tonight will give uh, the media what they're looking for. Obama will again, lend his credibility to Romney, and I think Romney walks away if he can avoid doing anything stupid. Big caveat, big, at, you know, Barry Bonds home run record style asterisk. But I think he should uh, take it. And Politico, according to Mike Allen's playbook, after weeks of less than positive media coverage of Romney, the race could break his way tonight. And they, they throw the if. Um, Romney is finally catching some breaks and is poised for a surge in more positive coverage if he ex exceeds expectations tonight. There are no expectations for Mitt Romney tonight. Other again, play the Sarah Palin game. Play it safe. And close Don't bet anyone $10,000. Don't ask for a birth certificate. Nothing along those lines. If he just plays it safe, uh, he'll turn out okay. And... Trust me, by Friday you're going to see the Romney comeback stories uh, full on. Uh, anyway, email me, radiobradshaw at gmail.com. Uh, join me on Twitter tonight, especially for...
the debate. Fair warning, there will be a lot of tweets coming tonight, uh, starting at 8 o'clock on pretty much every channel under the sun. Uh, but follow me on Twitter, twitter.com slash Radio Bradshaw. Go to thebradshawshow.com uh, for more information. And we will reconvene tomorrow to uh, mock, mostly, uh, the goings-on of tonight. And uh, as a heads-up, Friday, little Frankie, Frank Mink, is going to be joining me. Uh, he's <laughs> finally found out about uh, well some of the stuff I've been talking about for a while. So we'll compare notes. So Friday, Frank Mink, tomorrow night, or tomorrow afternoon, uh, we'll go over the debates, and we'll see you then. Uh, Bradshaw here on the BradshawShow.com, powered by Webcast One Live. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.